Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and I have been so thankful to be able to review so many different pieces of hardware that companies have sent me, um, as ranging from a bunch of PTZ cameras, and this is no exception. I'm actually honored to actually be able to do this, that this company reached out and sent me their 4K PTZ camera to check out, and that is Panasonic. They have sent me the AWUE80 4K PTZ camera, and this is the most expensive PTZ camera I've ever worked with, um, especially this is also the first 4K one. So let's go ahead and look at it. I'm not going to do an unboxing because honestly, what comes in the box? A mount, a power cable, the camera. There you go. There's your unboxing. Plus, some of the comments say that y'all don't like the unboxings anyway. But anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and hook this up. Let's see what you get when you get a 4K PTZ. Alrighty, so if we look here at the bottom, and let me zoom in here so y'all can see. Let's look at the back of all our connections here. We have our RS422 input right there. We also have a 3G SDI out. We have a Genlock in, so for those who don't use Genlock, and I've never used it personally, um, what this is is a way to send the signal between all the cameras so that they're all in sync. Um, some of the Blackmagic stuff has it as well too. Um, the ATEM can actually send it. The Blackmagic ATEM can send out a signal and link it if you have the right device. So that's really cool. You have your service dip switches. You have an audio in, HDMI out, network in, and power. Now this camera does support PoE power, so you don't need a the power plug that comes with it in that type of scenario. I am using just a generic. Um, unified PoE switch, not a PoE plus 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 or nothing like that. It's just regular PoE. Um, and I'll have a link to the exact one that I'm using and other ones that will work with it. Now, this is a 4K camera. So let it be known that 4K is only supported on the HDMI out. Not, I wasn't able to get 4K out of the 3G because I don't think it's actually even rated for that. But we'll go ahead and take a deep dive so you can see everything that works with this. Let me set this aside. Let me just show you the joystick for this thing. <laughs> now, this is almost like, it looks like one of the military drones that you would fly with this thing. This thing is um, serious. So let me zoom out a little bit here so you can actually see. So if we look at this, let me slide this over here. And let's zoom in so y'all can see this one. The connections on this. So we have five connections which are um, RS422. So this is how you would connect to your camera and then you have a network connection and then you also have a active SDI in and out and I think I have a cable. I want to see what this looks like when I hook this up. You have your tallies. So the tallies are the ones like I'm looking at right now that will show a red light if your that camera is actually active um, it does support that and then the second one i'm not really aware of what that one does off the top of my head but if i do figure out what it is i'll put it down on the screen in graphics so you can see all right so let's go ahead get this powered up and then we're also going to mount this camera so it also has on the bottom of it and i think i didn't say in what comes with it. It also came with a ceiling mount. So that way you can mount it upside down. It does have a typical quarter thread. I have my plate on here for this tripod. So a lot of people have reached out and said that they don't want, they're in a mobile space. They have to disconnect and set up stuff all the time. So in, for whatever reason, maybe it's my fault how I've explained in my videos, it always says they think I don't want to mount a PTZ. You don't have to. You can put them on a tripod like I'm using in this scenario. Now, one thing I am pleasantly surprised with is that this does support PoE power. Like I was saying, let's go ahead and hook up my HDMI cable here and a line for my PoE switch. And let's give that a second. And while I'm doing that, let's turn on the joystick here. And there we go, we are on. And I'm gonna cut over so that you can actually see footage from the camera when it turns on. So let's give it a second. 
And there we go. There for half a second. There we go. So if we reach over there, cool, cool, cool. Now that I freed this up, I can move the joystick over here to my desk and I need to connect this over, um, over ethernet directly to this, all right? So I got a cable around here somewhere. Let me hook that up real quick. All right, so now the beauty of this, the Panasonic joystick as well as the Panasonic camera, now that I have this connected, it pretty much has already set itself up to be able to be controlled. So if I switch over to here, and now I'm just gonna use the joystick and I'm on camera number one, which I only have one there. You can see that we have motion here. So you can see, see me right there and you're seeing my setup here and very fluid motion, I must say. They really highlighted the motors that they're really quiet and it gives you some serious control. I'm being very delicate with me moving this so you, I don't want to get too much because you're going to see my, my messy workspace that I'm working in. But really, really smooth. So inside of the joystick, you also have a trigger here on the handle that um, is giving me some more control in here. And that is functioning as you zoom and zoom out. So if I switch this back so you can actually see. So I am just hitting the trigger right there on the handle and giving me some positions. So pretty much everything that you would assume with a regular PTZ that you've seen with the lower end models, you can actually do the same thing. You can set presets, you can set scenes, you can actually set the frame rate on the camera. So like for me at my church, we have a digital wall that's running at a certain Hertz. And sometimes you see that motion in the screen because your camera is shooting faster than the image or vice versa. And how do you compensate for that? You set the frame rate to the exact same speed as this, the refresh rate. So at my church, I think the camera was set at 50, 50 hertz, but the screen was at 60. I move it to 60, then you don't see it. It's in sync. Um, so they talked about a lot of functionality that you can use with this, as well as they have some options inside of here. So we did a review of some other cameras that does some auto tracking. This camera has auto tracking. It is the feature that you have to pay for that adds on to it, but it will track and do some intelligence following AI base that will follow your subject as well too. Now I don't have that on here. I'll probably do a follow-up video to do that because honestly it's kind of hard for me to do some tracking here in this area because I just got so much stuff in here. Um, so I would love to have this like in the sanctuary with a subject in a t similar type of setup and maybe I can get over there today to do something like that at least to shoot some footage for it. Alrighty folks we are here at Signs and Wonders Ministries where we have the camera set up. So originally this is our existing camera right now. We have the Panasonic set up relatively um, close to the same position. And again, we talked about this before. Does the camera put out a great image quality? Yes, it does. But in our scenario, in our setup, everything that we have here minus the TVs is not capable of supporting 4K. So if I was, if I could get a, uh, I don't know, maybe if I can get a ladder or something like that to hook up the camera directly to the TVs or through the um, digital wall, we would get a full 4K image. But through the video switcher that we have, it only supports as high as 1080p 60. So is the camera great? Yes, it is. But realize when you get a camera like this, you have to have the infrastructure to support it. And we talked about it before. The video switcher needs to be able to support it. The cables that are handling the signal need to be able to uh, support it. Your upload speed, everything, your computer processing 4K, all this other stuff needs to be able to support it. But then on the other side, the people watching it need to be able to support it as well too. But anyway, I wanted to be here just to show you what that looks like with footage from this camera. I will splice in back and forth when we're going from the existing camera to the Panasonic one. So we got everything set up over here. Let me show you what we got. So right now, camera number six is the Panasonic and this is our regular camera here. 
All right. Now, another thing that was mentioned that I got wrong, and I should have, you probably didn't hear this in the video because I edited it out, but to say it right now, I stand corrected that the camera can be controlled with another um, PTZ joystick. So it's not just a Panasonic specific one that's needed. Now, unfortunately, out of the joysticks that I have, um, they did not work. So I've tried a the brand that I have here at my church, as well as this other one that I got from here, and this does not work with it either. So um, if I can get my hands on another joystick, I would try it out, but I've kind of reached the limit of the joysticks that I do have, because those are all the ones that I have. But anyway, let's get in here, let's do some footage, and let's see what this camera looks like. It's just wild the lens gives you from zoomed all the way back it just gives so much more um, it's capturing so much more I don't know what the proper term is but it's just for, as you see from right here I got them as close as possible without mounting it and pulling it down but the fact that this gives me so much a field of view compared to the other ones so this is again the Sony camera that I have and even if I'm here from a shot, it just gives me so much of a wider view of what this camera can pick up. And again, I really like that the, the motion is really, really smooth in comparison. Way, like I engaged some of the ND filters when I was um, zooming up and showing, looking into the light. Um, it did have a little bit of an issue with the focus, but I have everything set on automatic, um, just like I have the other cameras here, but um, really, really cool. I must say. So let's go ahead and cut back over and let's actually go back home and finish up this video. All right. So um, what else do you have? Let's actually, now that we got the camera on here, let's go ahead and cut over to the computer because they have software that you need to use to actually talk to this. So let's go ahead and get back over to the computer and let's look at the camera. Alrighty, so we're here on our desktop now and let's go ahead and just go through our advanced IP so we can see if we can find the IP address. Now again, yeah, I could have looked on the, on the controller, but I just want to see what it shows up here because this is just something that we normally always use. And my assumption when you're looking at this is this is one of those things that, and I'll get to where I would see this being a viable solution for an install. But say you already have something and you're looking to move in this direction. Um, you want to upgrade the stuff that you're using. You want to replace everything going into 4K. Um, so this is kind of, you know, at least for me, this is how I would use this. So there we are. There's the AWEU. U, EU. See, I just said it backwards. UE80. Let's go to the web page here. Let's get into it here. And there we go. So this 
also, this camera also does support NDI as well too. So if I just happen to open up the NDI studio here, studio monitor, let's see, and there we go. So there's our device as well too. And with NDI control, you can move it as well under NDI. So you're getting auto tracking, you're getting NDI, you're getting 4K, you've got a bunch of bells and whistles all integrated into this. So these were some presets that I made. Now, obviously I've moved this camera since then. So let's see where it goes. So actually this preset should be down where my Iron Man um, Lego statue is. So it's right there. So we could always set a new one here again. And we just hit set. Yes, I want to override that. So there we go. And boom, we're all set now. So now if I cut over to, oh, I don't want to set. Let's turn that off. And let's go back to this other position, which is not right, because would have been the back of my head. <laughs> but let's adjust that as well too. Some baby pictures of my little girl right there. I don't know. So let's do that. Let's come down here. Let's do set. Let's set that to position number two. And then the image has been updated. So now we go. So if we cut back over to our shot that we just did of our Iron Man. Boom. Very, very smooth. And then we cut over to this shot. There we go. All right. Now we have some other settings, like I said, auto white balance, um, we have shutter. Now it does also have ND filters. Um, for those who don't know what that is, ND filters are like sunglasses for your PTZ camera. I've had issues with this before where I've taken some of these other cameras out onto the field when I was doing football games and it was just so bright that it pulled in all of the, the light and it just washed out the image so you couldn't even see anything, but you can engage that stuff as well too. So Let's see, we got 1 4th, 1 16th, 1 64th. Um, and, you know, and then you also have auto, which it will adjust automatically. Really cool features there. So we got our speed on how fast we want to move the camera. We got our zoom. So, I mean, we can really zoom in on the, the dirt that's on my um, mount, my mic mount here. Clean that real quick. <laughs> um, so really slick. So let's see. We also have some other options. That's stream number one. What else do we have? We have on-screen menu. So we can on-screen display. So just like typically, you can go through settings here. And let's go to the camera. We have our scene. So you can set different scenes for a different scenario. So like at on Wednesdays, normally it's late at night. And we don't have that much daylight coming into the sanctuary. You can set a scene to where you can adjust the brightness, the picture, and everything like that automatically. And then it's like, hey, when you're in that scenario, boom, there you go. Now let's back out of here. And let's go to system. So again, this is what I was talking about, the frequency. Right now is at 59.94. You can come in here and change this to different settings. 50, 24, 23.98. That's the lowest it went to, 59. And that's, I guess that's the range that we got for right now. So I'm gonna keep it at there. Let's go to our format and let's see what difference one we got. So we got 4K at 29.97, 4K at 59.94. Doesn't go to 60, because again, this is more of like a broadcast standard. Um, so you're gonna be using that um, 29 point something and 50, I mean, 27 point something and um, 59.94. So you can go down to 1080i um, and actually all the way down to 720p. Can't go any lower than 720p, 59.94. But either way, let's go back up to what we had it set to. Now, if I go up to this, I think my. Yeah, I should be able to see it. I don't know if my image is going to show through the ATEM, but I'll go ahead and OK this. And I want to see, will I still get an image through the ATEM? It just went out for me here. 
So see, here's the image coming from the camera directly. And all right, so that didn't work for me. But now it's asking me from a menu standpoint, does this work? And I'm going to say no. So let's go ahead and refresh this real quick so I can get my image here. All right, so we're back. Let's go back to our image. And we're back to um, 1080-5994 because I didn't get a signal through the ATEM. The ATEM will scale you to 1080p, um, 60 at the highest, but it, anything higher than that, it won't. So even this camera is a 4K, but it's scaled down to 1080p. All right, so there's your gen lock settings, your tracking data output. This is where if we had everything connected, but hey, we're not using that. And we can set camera ID the same way that you would give a different one if you wanted to do that. All right, so your output. So this is your format. Let's look at this as well too, and let's see what settings we got. So as you can see, I can't go any higher. So the SDI out is only gonna give you 1080p, 5994 as the max and nothing else, all right? So, but the HDMI out, this is where you can change those settings as well too. And I think it's locked me because of the other settings. So that's fine. All right, let's go out. Your pan tilt, um, installation, that's your desk. So in other words, I'm setting it there or you can flip it upside down and then you would change it. So that would be your settings here hanging. So everything's upside down, but you know, we're good. You can change your speed. Um, privacy mode, power on position, where do you want it to go to? So you can set the preset that it's going to jump to. So every time it starts up instead of the home position, really like that. Um, then you have your presets and it just tells you the speed of how you can switch to those. Um, gives you some other stuff, other set, tons and tons of settings. So a lot more than what you typically would go through. So here we have maintenance. We can look at the firmware version, your IP, and it tells you right there. And then you can copy scene, you can initialize um, HDMI status. So it's telling you what's actually being pushed out right now. What is our meter? Okay, that tells you the operation of it. Okay, so I guess it's maintenance on how long it can do. I've never seen that, never really thought about that, but I guess it's understandable. Let's return back. All right, so the other things you got here, you can turn the power off and put it in standby mode here um, if you want to. And let's other settings that we got over here. Those are your presets, your image quality stuff. We can make that full screen. Um, what else? So we can do... So everything is actually in full auto right here. There's our full screen of the image if we wanted to just see that. Um, we can lock the web so if somebody actually has to go in, somebody won't accidentally hit any buttons. Really cool stuff. So um, let me know what other things you would like me to test out with this. Again, it, it, it's kind of unique for me to show you this type of stuff because, again, I mean, I can only show you from here from my from my studio of what I can do with it. I'm probably gonna see if I can get some footage if I haven't already added it already of what this camera will look like in a sanctuary. And I, you know what, there's one other thing I didn't do. I wanted to look at and see what happens when you hook up a SDI cable to the overhead. So let's actually do that real quick. All righty, so we have our pre-made SDI cable here. So we're gonna go into the SDI out on the back of here. And let's go to the end on here. And let's see. I didn't see in the manual where it actually is going to do anything, but you never know. Oh, there it goes. There's a picture. Now, I wonder, is that... I'm wondering if that's pulling from here. Let me zoom in so you can actually see. So very nice picture, but let me just make sure. Is it from the SDI? 
and it is so good. But I'm just wondering how this would go to each one if you had multiple cameras. So I'm not 100% sure on that one, but in this scenario, that's fine. So yeah, that gave me that, and I've actually reached the full limit, the range of the camera in that position. So if we look over here, and like I said, this the trigger is what's showing um, my zooming in and out. So there is no twisting to this. I mean, this is like an actual flight yoke, which is really, really cool. Um, and again, now I know I'm not going over a lot of some of the stuff because again, I'm just being real honest with you. This is a significant jump in um, what this can do, which also means it's an in-depth knowledge of actually seeing what you have access to. Just like we talk about different hardware, we only go through a surface level, but there's so much more that you can do. So for this standpoint, going back to what I was saying originally, personally, I would suggest this is if you're trying to quote unquote, and I hate using this word, future proof your situation, meaning that you have a brand new sanctuary, you got the money to spend, and you go with a bunch of these, the joystick and everything and everything is a 4K or higher base. So in my setup, I'm not even getting the full use out of this. I'm gonna have some stock, um, some footage, some sample footage of me connecting and capturing 4K output from this camera directly. Um, so you can see, cause I'll do my capture card actually accepts 4K. So you can see what it looks like, but you're never gonna see that unless you go from the camera being 4K to a video switcher that supports 4K, to a display in the sanctuary that supports 4K, to a computer if you're streaming that inputs 4K, that streams out with an upload speed and network connection speed that supports 4K, to a platform that supports 4K, and then your end user needs to have a 4K download speed um, as well as a screen to actually see that. You see that whole workflow. Now, if you're not concerned about that, and kind of like me, I do my videos in 4K, kind of future-proofing for me, because it just makes it easier for me to do it. And even if y'all don't see it in 4K, that's fine. But, you know, from a ministry standpoint, again, if you are doing a brand new sanctuary and you're putting in all this stuff and you want to go with 4K and higher, this is when I would add that. But if you're slowly having a plan to replace everything with cameras like this and have 4K PTZs and everything in your whole infrastructure, then, hey, piecemealing it and getting into it will work as well, too. Again, Panasonic, thank you so much for sending this out to me. Um, I've had quite a while to play around with it. And honestly, I've done this video about like four times and it just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. Um, but that's why I'm just re-recording it because I wanted to just show you the ins and outs and my opinions personally of using it. Great image quality gives you multiple scenarios of a bunch of the cameras that we've reviewed before, but they're all compiled into one device. And like I said, this is significantly more in cost than the other cameras that we've done, but it's not necessarily about always doing stuff cheap. When you want to step up, hey, this is something you want to move to. I started off with webcams and then I moved up and then that's why I'm using the cameras that I'm using now because I was able to slowly progress to that level. Now, if you are struggling with, with regular internet speed, I wouldn't suggest you go and get one of these. But if you're looking to move your stuff and have a better image quality and you have the funds to do it, this is a nice camera to add to your setup. So. Let me know if you have any questions, um, leave them down below. I try to respond to every comment as possible. I have a link to everything if you're interested in that. And I'm gonna see if I can um, get some contact information for Panasonic if you want to talk to them to get some more information, way more than what I did. And again, big thank you to Panasonic for sending this out to me. Um, and I need to put this up in a box and ship it out to them pretty soon. So if you like this type of content, appreciate the like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We'll catch you on the next video. Later.